Thanks for stopping by my channel. I am Serge T. In this video, I'll be talking about Monday Night Raw for the 13th of May, 2024. And as Raw kicks off, we see Gunther and Kofi arrive. As we do main event, Jey Uso and the Mad Dragon, Ilya Dragunov. Now the quarterfinal rounds in the King of the Ring tournament uh, continue on uh, Monday Night Raw. And then we see Drew McIntyre return to Raw. And he will he come face to face with Punk or will he just miss him again? CM Punk chants begin as Drew McIntyre, after coming down that aisle and stepping into the ring, looking in the crowd, and he they start again with the CM Punk chants, and then McIntyre addresses the crowd. Insults begin right off the bat, and tells the crowd Punk isn't going to show up in Gainesville, or excuse me, Greenville. He only comes to big towns crowd booze a jab at punk that he looked like he was on drugs without even being on drugs you know he's straight edge he never uh does that so that was kind of a low blow and then he tells the cm punk fans just plain stupid and his ultimate goal is the world heavyweight championship and calls Damian Priest a paper champion. Then Priest's music hits and El Campeon heads to the ring to confront the Scottish psychopath. He tells Drew to say whatever he wants and say it to his face. Drew kind of gives Priest a backhanded comment by telling him that he deserves all his success, but he's not, you know, not the World Heavyweight Championship. He's telling him, telling him he ain't. World Heavyweight Championship material. Why does he have the belt? Why is he in possession of the World Heavyweight Championship that he held for only five minutes? And then tells him that that money in the bank geek briefcase is the only way he could have beaten him for his title at WrestleMania. Priest says the only person to blame... You know, he doesn't blame himself or Drew McIntyre. He blames everybody else. But Priest tells him to look in the mirror and blame that asshole. That's the one up behind uh, his uh, failures and all that stuff. I mean, he honestly said asshole. They allow that to uh, be heard on um, the USA Network. Now, Priest did cash in. On a man who should have taken his title win and go home. But Punk, a one-armed man, beat his ass and left an opening for Priest. Now remember, the reason why Priest did that is because in the past, Drew McIntyre kept thwarting you know, Damian Priest's uh, attempts to cash in. So this was Priest's definite moment, opportune moment to strike. Oh, and McIntyre wanted a shot at the gold. Well, Priest gives him his shot. Will it be at the King of the Ring Tournament Premium Live event? <clears throat> now up next, quarterfinals match up for the ladies are announced for tonight. Lyra Valkyria versus Zoe Stark and Io Sky versus Shayna Baszler. And their match starts and then they get into... No, no, I imagine start, you know, they got into a scuffle. Nothing out of the ordinary, just a little pushing and name calling. As they were like backstage or heading into the uh, arena. Now before the break, as the match now starts between Shayna and Io, Shayna knocks Io off the apron. So Shayna is trying to establish herself as a threat right off the bat. Now in this match, Io must use her quickness and speed to counter Baszler's ruthlessness and MMA experience. And seven years ago, these two battled it out for the stardom world title. They both came from that promotion, and um, I've seen some uh, footage from that, and uh, yeah, they were uh, bitter rivals even going back then. 
This match is off to a great start as both women use what brought them to the dance, and Shayna's journey to this round came at the expense of Maxine Dupree. Maxine Dupree uh, replaced Zena, Zelina Vega, who was injured. Quite a lot of injuries in this tournament. And, uh, you know, so uh, Shayna kind of had an easy going into this match, as she's not going to have it easy taking on Io Sky. And then again, a knee is injured in the Queen, Queen of the Ring tournament match. Uh, as Basil's leg gets caught up in the ropes, and as she tumbles to the floor, Io hits a patented moonsault to the outside, taking out the submission magician. That's the thing about, about this tournament. You know, we've seen you know what happened with uh, Randy Orton. And then, who was the other one? Oh, uh, Bianca. It was just like a momentary thing. It's just in the ring, their, their uh, knees got jammed up and stuff like that. And then we have here, same thing. It's almost like that was the, I don't know, what that. what is that? The, the calling card, you know, for this, these matches. Like, you know, you got to make them vulnerable, have their knees taken out. There's other things they could take out. I don't know. Kind of weird, you know. Now, inside the ring, Rio matches Shayna's physicality, and Shayna needs to get back on that horse and take back control. But at this point, Shayna is kicking out of Io's offense, at least. At least she's hanging in there. Now, one sequence saw Io go for the over the moose salt, but Baszler got her knees up. But Io still turned around, turned that around and performed a pinning combo into a bridge. But Shayna reverses it into a Kurafuda clutch. Now, Io was able to uh, slap on a, an STF, but it's escaped by... Shayna, who nearly puts out Io with a running knee for a near fall. Io hits a Meteora on Shayna, setting her up for the over the moon salt for the win and advancement to the semis where she will face either Zoe Starks or Lyra Valkyria. And in the ring, Io is asked about her thoughts after the match. I don't speak Japanese, so only Io knows how she feels, you know. But nonetheless, Io moves on. And like I said, she'll either face Zoe Starks or Lyra Valkyria. Now, Kyra, Carlito, kind of, he, he can offer a little muscle to the Judgment Day. He offers, but Priest doesn't want him there. No trust from the champ regarding Carlito. Now, this coming Friday, Cody and Logan Paul will officially sign their contracts for the WWE Championship match at... King of the Ring, Queen of the Ring uh, tournament, PLE. And also, the King of the Ring and Queen of the Ring quarterfinal matches for SmackDown will commence as for the men, we see Carmelo take on Randy Orton. LA Knight faces off with Tama Tonga. And for the women, it's Jade versus Naya. And the EST will see what she has and what she can do as she takes on Tippy Time, uh, Tiffany Stratton. So that's going to be a very, very good match. It was very predictable, meaning I knew those two would face each other because that's the marquee match, you know. Is it going to be, you know, Bianca Belair and, and B. Chin? I don't think so. Now, Chad, he gives Max a talking to, Maxine, I should say, because she lost her match to uh, Sheena Baszler. And then Otis and Sami Zayn will go at it. And Tozawa will face Bronson Reed. And Gable doesn't want Otis shaking his hips or Tozawa doing a stupid dance. And I agree with that. It's kind of annoying when he was doing that. I don't mind Otis doing what he does because he's funny. He's great. And at first it was, uh, you know, Otis taking on Bronson Reed. But then he wanted his number one guy dead. Gable wanted his number one guy to soften up the IC champ, uh, Sami Zayn. Now, Samantha Irvin announces Lillian Garcia, and she is asked to announce the next match. Now, when she announced, uh, you know, who was it that she, uh, yeah, Kofi Kingston, she sounded great. She's a little shaky. But she did all right announcing Kofi Kingston. But I am glad Samantha Irvin uh, announced Gunther. Great to see Lillian, but this is Samantha's era. And then, an awesome truth. They're looking forward to whom will be their next opponents. This is backstage as we're talking to the GM of Raw. 
Adam Pierce, but Kiana James appears and is looking forward to working closely with Adam Pierce. It looks like she's going to bring that character of hers from NXT over to the main roster. No tweaking there, no changing of her thing. She's she's going to do that, and that's actually good. That's I love her personality of someone who is all about numbers and she's all about you know deadlines and things like that. She's like one of those like CEO office types. Kind of like her character. If I remember correctly, I haven't, it's been a while, but I, that's what that kind of vibe I got off of that character. Now, up next, Kofi Kingston of the Through Day looks to beat the Ring General, Gunther. Good luck with that, Kofi. And Kofi takes it to Gunther, starting the match, using his anger and intensity to the Ring General. And this match hasn't even started yet. I mean, he's doing this all for Xavier Woods, who's injured. And then as the bell rings, finally, Gunther is favoring his knee that Kofi targeted. But he gets off an attempted German, but Kofi flips out of it and attacks his knee again. But Gunther stops all that momentum and catches Kofi on the outside, and the ring general works on the back of Kofi, pushing him into the ring apron, you know, slamming him onto the announce desk, and while on the desk, he puts Kofi into a Boston crowd. And then back from the break... Gunther is all over Kofi, continues his assault on Kofi's back, and Kofi is only in his third King of the Ring match as uh, Michael Cole kind of like wants to drop some facts to us here and there. And they're really, really good. I love when he does this and kind of, kind of surprising because he's been in the company so long, Kofi Kingston. And uh, one of the matches he lost was to Sheamus and that, of course, led to Sheamus eventually later on becoming the King of the Ring. And then Kofi, in the end, misses a trouble in paradise. And Gunther delivers a powerbomb, but transitions into a Boston Crab. I like that transition. I like that set of, uh, that kind of moveset that he has when he does that. And then he taps out the former WWE champion. And get this. Gunther will face in the semis next week either Jey Uso or Ilya Dragunov. Now, I love Jey Uso, but I want to see... The Ring General versus the Mad Dragon. Because it will be a rematch that I have been dying to see for some time now. Now, Lyra Valkyria sends a message to Damage Control. She sent it to them last week. And she will always be there for Becky anytime she needs a little Irish backup. Now, Becky comes on just during this interview backstage. And she thanks her. And then... Um, she walks off, and then in comes Liv. Liv has a question for Lyra. Has Becky always been a bitch? Lyra tells her, tell Becky yourself. She turns around, and then Becky sucker punches her, a la what she did to uh, Damien, I mean not Damien, <laughs> Dom Mysterio. Remember that? That's a clean shot. You know what I mean? You guys watch that? And how clean she hit, she hit him. She hit him for real, it seems like. I think Dom said, just give it to me. Just pop me in the mouth. And then she says to Lid, does Becky, I'm not the one scared of a face-to-face -face match, bitch. Now, backstage, we see Kofi nursing his injuries, nursing his, you know, licking his wounds. And then you hear a Kofi. Tough loss, but there's always time to turn things around, says Karrion Cross to, book, to Kofi backstage. I'm like, hmm, what does that mean? This is what I'm talking about. They are building him to look strong. He's not being involved in matches where he loses all the time. He's actually building up his aura, kind of trying to bring that back. I think this was Triple H's idea and his uh, plan to bring him back, I guess, because now they're looking strong. Now he's looking like that guy that's lurking in the background and kind of, you know, picking people that he wants to to antagonize and, you know, put fear in them. Now I'm beginning to dig it. Now I'm beginning to be like, okay, now these guys will definitely be, put, be over. <clears throat> they just have to keep doing this. Random attacks too and all that stuff. They were doing that. You did it with the New Catch Republic. Right? And then, you know, so that's how, it's got, that's how it's got to go. That's how it's got to be, you know? You got to do that. You can't just throw them out there and then they're going to end up losing every week. Because how is that going to make him strong? Make AOP strong, you know? Now, 
Bronson Reed looks to squash Tozawa and Will. Tozawa has no chance. And over the forecast in Tozawa's future sees a tu- tsunami. Can't do it. I can't do it like uh, Wade Barrett. <clears throat> now, we see in the end, not going to go over this whole match, Tozawa tries to do a Hurricane Rana. He dives up the top rope onto a waiting Bronson Reed and he turns it into a Death Valley driver. And yes, like I said, Tozawa was a victim of a tsunami. I mean, I don't know if how Tozawa didn't need a spatula to, you know, remove him from that mat. But uh, what else was that going to happen? How else was that going to end up? It was going to end up like that. That is all she wrote. And that's Tozawa isn't a main eventer. Tozawa is not even a top mid carter. He's a comedy act. And for somebody who's very talented like him, because I watched 205 Live before back in the day, and he was one of the stars there. He's a former Cruiserweight champion, and he was very, very, he's very good. He had the crowd behind him. Remember that one time where he would do that, that, oh, oh, but however he does that, right? I kind like, of look silly doing that, but he would do that, right? And then everybody would, everybody would be chanting that. And he, he had a lot of, uh, what do you call it? A lot of momentum behind him. Building up, he was building up, and people were behind him. And I guess, like I said, McMahon back then, of course, if he's not pushing you, he's not going to, he's going to punish you by putting you in catering and and making you disappear for a while so people forget you. Now, Jackie Redman, oh no, let's think, okay, let's do this. And we see Kathy Kelly dropping facts as she points out to Kaiser that Dragunov beat Gunther. In NXT, and then Jimmy cost his brother, Jay, the IC Championship. And, you know, that's the reason why uh, Gunther beat Jay. And then last week, Kaiser's underhanded tactics led to Gunther beating Sheamus. And now, Kaiser, you know, he berates Kelly, Kathy, and tells her that Gunther doesn't need to answer to anyone. His resume speaks for itself, and then he tells her, we are done here. Now, Jackie Redman is backstage again with, no, he's, she's at, Jackie's Redman is backstage with the Raw GM, Adam Pierce, And then a fatal four-way match is announced to crown a new number one contenders. New number one contenders and the teams are the New Catch Republic, the Authors of Pain, the Creed Brothers, and then Judgment Day's J.D. McDonough and Finn Balor. Now... Because he feels that he's not a high caliber raw superstar at the top just yet, Pierce didn't want to throw Bronson Reed, no Bronson Reed, uh, Bron Breaker into the deep end yet in regards to the King of the Ring tournament where the others have earned their place. Breaker comes in and he considers them in the deep end with him. And he would have dragged them down and watched them drown. Then he's walking off, but then he can hear him tell Adam Pierce that he should have been in the tournament. He's pretty much saying that he is the ultimate predator, you know, in the deep end. He is the Megalodon, right? He is the, you ought to call it, the king shark, if you will. And I don't know, man. I I didn't even think about Bronze Breaker, but now that I'm thinking about it, yeah, maybe he should have been in the tournament. You know, I mean, come on. Ilya Dragunov... Is new to the roster too, to the main roster, and, and he's put in the tournament. So we'll see what happens with Ron Breaker and how he's going to be booked. And I don't know what's going to be his direction. Now Zoe Starks, she takes on Lyra Valkyria, who is my sentimental favorite, to be in the final. You know, I just feel that Io will face. Bianca, because I feel there is yet unfinished business between those two. But I hear, but I hear a great response to Lyra as she comes out, and I hope that is only a sign of her being accepted and embraced by the WWE universe. And Valkyria, she's all over Stark, utilizing her amazing athleticism and in-ring talent. But all Zoe has to do is a, her use her Smash Mouth style 
And on the outside, she does stop Lyra cold. But inside, Zoe executes and lands her twisting drop kick. But it's only good for a near fall. But Lyra fires up and delivers a drop kick of her own through the second rope to the outside. And then, coming back into the side of the, um, the ring, she sails through the air with a high cross body. And, it t- and, it, and in turn, does a tornado DDT that drops Zoe on the top of her head. And that only gets a near fall. And then we hear the Lyra chants start up. Now Zoe's at the top of the turnbuckle and rolls out of an attempted dive. Lyra went for the, well, Zoe went for the Z360, but Lyra turns that attempt into a Nightwing and gets the win and advances to the semis to face EO Sky. And Lyra, what did she say post-match? What she has to say to EO is that she is Lyra Valkyria, a former NXT Women's Champion, and she will fly as high as the crows fly straight to the top. If you remember seeing her, I mean, in the NXT, not NXT, but NXT UK, she would always leave feathers. I believe they're crow feathers. And that's how she would mark her opponents or who she wanted to face next. So I guess she's kind of bringing that aura back about that. She was even talking Gaelic, you know, as was pointed out by Michael Cole. And uh, they really, really are building her up and making her look great in this tournament. And I hope this leads to her being a future world champion. She might be the one facing, uh, winning the tournament and facing uh, her friend, her, I guess you could say her mentor, that being Becky Lynch for the title, we'll see. Now, Jay last week gave Finn the yeet down, and then he will give Dragunov a yeet down tonight, and then also Gunther a yeet down as well. So a lot of confidence for Jay. You ain't, you know, got, you gotta get through uh, Dragunov first there, Jay, and then you can... Think about giving a yeet down to Gunther. Now, up next, Otis faces the current IC champ, Sami Zayn. And Gable is counting on his number one guy to soften up Sami Zayn. Because Gable will be involved in a triple threat match. Which also involves Bronson Reed at the King of the Ring, Queen of the Ring tournament premium live event. Otis doesn't heed his Alpha Academy coach and does the worm and hits the elbow but misses the Bader bomb and ends up eating a halluva kick and loses the match. Now Gable explodes on Otis, smacks him in the back of the head. Sammy comes in and gets Gable in the corner and then he misses him with a halluva kick. Get on the outside, Gable out of frustration slaps the taste out of Otis and Otis just stands there as the crowd is chanting Otis and he looks downtrodden he looks like he's just depressed and sad like he doesn't know how to deal with master gable and i don't know if they're gonna turn this into a a feud who wants to see that feud i mean they want they want gable to move on and be one of the top mid card guys going after the ic title right and then eventually one day battling for the world heavyweight title that's somebody that can definitely get that rub and should get that rub and be you know booked that way because we all want to see him do that we all want to see gable reach that level but we'll see what happens with wwe and you know there's a chance because you know triple h is now in charge now backstage we see Strowman. he's talking to the uh creed brothers and talking to uh ivy nile he's even you know you know complimenting her on her big guns you know what i mean she shows him up you know i'm going if someone's going to, uh, you know, as big as Braun Strowman's going to be complimenting you, that's that's a definitely a big uh, a big thing, a big deal, right? And she is she is pretty, you know, that's what they call her, the pit bull, because the way she is, the way she's, you know, I mean, you see her in NXT, and she was doing those uh, training things and vignettes and all that stuff, man, she's intense. She really is. Now, JD, you know, steps up to Strowman and backstage, and that he tells him that, He's been warned because of, you know, you know, Braun Strowman sticking his nose in uh, Judgment Day business. But I'm like, really, JD? Braun sticks his nose in y'all's business and you're the one to tell him this? I'm like, good luck with that, McDonough. And then he talks to the, the Creed's and uh, Ivy Nile. Goes, you believe that? And they're all just nodding their head like they just don't believe that he has that kind of guts. 
Now, the women's world champ, Becky Lynch, is challenged by Dakota Kai in a non-title match. And Becky's feisty and she gets into it right off the bat with Kai. Showing her intensity and not letting up in her last kicking offense. Now, Kai takes over as she kicks Lynch while the champ was seated on the top turnbuckle. But as she takes it to Becky, Lynch makes a comeback, but Dakota regains control and slaps a side headlock. But Becky again regains control and this match is a seesaw battle. That sees Lynch about to tap out Dakota, but then damage control attack Becky and draw a DQ. But Becky's fellow last kicker runs to the ringside and inside the ring and cleans house, does Lyra Valkyria. As she comes face to face with her opponent next week, Io Sky. Becky takes out Sky, but then Liv follows suit and she takes out Becky. And then she's run out of the ring by Lyra Valkyria. So that uh, that is uh, continuing to uh, you know gain some heat. You know the money in the bank. I mean money in the bank, but the the king of the ring, queen of the ring, uh, PLE is coming up next week. I, be, I believe, right? Or 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 just as soon, maybe two weeks or something like that. Right, the twenty. What is it? The twenty fifth, twenty sixth, right? So it's coming soon. Now, some people say, says Dragunov, as he's interviewed backstage by Jackie Redman, it's a dream, a destiny to be here. To be in this spot, Dragunov says he wants to make moments and be the czar of the ring. And he will be in the main event with main event Jey Uso. Now, he talks of only a few having beaten Gunther. And then he points out that he has beaten Gunther. And just as he names or mentions his name, Gunther appears. He just smiles as Dragunov breathes and huffs and puffs like a dragon. And nothing is even said between the two. And then you know the confidence and the cocky, arrogant smile that drives people nuts because it's just like, what an ass, because the way he does it, it's just like he gets under your skin. Like, you can yell at him all you want and threaten his life, and he just looks at you, and he just smiles. Like, because Gunther knows that he's, you know, the ring general. You're like, whatever you do, I don't care. I'm going to take it to you, and I'm going to win every time. That's his attitude. Now, up next is the Fatal 4-Way number one contenders match for the World Tag Team Championship. Now, JD and Finn come out, then followed by the New Catch Republic. The Creeds come out next to join the fray. And last but not least, the AOP, accompanied by the Final Testament. Now, this match will be all over the place, and I will not, you know, in a sec, you know what I mean? It's like it's a lot, it's a lot uh, to describe it, you know, because you know these matches are all over the place, and, uh, you know, sometimes, you know, it's just hard to. You know, but you know it's hard to just pinpoint certain moments or whatever. That I mean, I'm gonna do that, and uh, hopefully um, I could do it justice. You know, but at one point, the AOP just go to town and take out all the competitors and throws JD into the waiting arms of the others on the outside of the ring, taking them out. And then yet at another time, Julius Creed handles his business and shows why one day he might be the breakout single star amongst the Creeds. The AOP hit a super collider at one point. Brutus delivers a Brutus bomb to the outside taking the field. And then earlier, even his brother delivered a standing superplex from the top turnbuckle. He just jumps at the top. And, you know, you saw earlier, before that, you see Tyler Bate and Pete Dunne do, you know, do backflips, you know, flipping out, you know, onto, you know, whoever that was on the outside. I know. But then in the end, but with the help, you know, with the help of Carlito, Balor hits a coup de gras on Pete Dunne, who was hit by a backstabber by Carlito on the announce desk, and then he picks up the victory for the Judgment Day. Now the main event on Raw tonight, and the Yeet lights are out in force. I like that because that's what Michael Cole said. The Yeet lights. That was that was really kind of. I love that. As main event, Jey Uso is in the house. But he takes on a man who stands in his way in advancing in the King of the Ring tournament, and that is Ilya Dragunov. Now, this can go either way, but I hope Ilya 
but it, I hope it, it goes the way of the Mad Dragon. And Jay is enough is isn't off to a great start as he eats chops from the Mad Dragon. Now those are those aren't you know those jokes you know I mean those jokes those uh chops aren't a joke. But Jay isn't main event for a reason as he hits a suicide dive to Dragonov, but Ilya gets back into it and clears the announce desk and went for an H bomb but misses. And then Jay hits a spear and sends himself and Dragonov up and over the announce desk. And the fact that Dragonov is the last man to beat Gunther just speaks on how important it is for him to win this match and go on to face Gunther in the semis. And then Jay gets a kick gets a kick to his to his face for all the yeeting he was dropping he was doing prior to it. And then a Constantine special is delivered to Jay, turning him inside out. That's that spins around a bit rope middle ropes, comes back in, does a kind kinda of like a uh, what do you call that? A what do you call that? Like a, it's like a lariat, you know, it's like a tornado lariat kind of thing. And then, uh, like I said, he turns Jay inside out. And then towards the end, he delivers an H-bomb and connects. He tries to follow up with a torpedo in Moscow and ends up eating a spear. And we know what comes next. The Uso splash and he delivers and pins Dragonov. And I'm sad. But a match between Dragunov and Gunther will have to wait. Perhaps a future match for the World Heavyweight title at WrestleMania. Gunther is on that path. Now, is Dragunov going to be his, you know, challenger? Will Dragunov win the Royal Rumble? Will he win the Elimination Chamber? We'll have to wait and see, but that's going to be a match that I think they're waiting on that match to pull the trigger on that match and make it main event SummerSlam. Royal Rumble, WrestleMania. I think that that's going to be a great idea. And hopefully that's what they're planning. Because Dragunov not winning tonight. Although I'm depressed. <laughs> no, not depressed. But I'm sad. It, it, it sucks that he didn't win. But there's going to be another time for him. Because this is Jay's time. And I think that he will eventually become world champion. I don't know when. And if he does, it might be short-lived because then, you know, they're going to drop it to Gunther. They might give it to him and then he might hold it for a month or so and then drop it to Gunther. Who knows? I don't know. And like I said, I can dream. I can dream right about that match happening. And then inside the ring, Gunther goes face-to-face -face with his opponent, Jey Uso, who he's going to face next week um, on Raw. Uh, you know, this um, Monday Night Raw was a lot of fun. Love the promos, love the backstage interviews. The in-ring action was was good. Some matches, okay. But the King of the Ring tournament, um, you know, quarterfinals were very good. Of course, I love the Jay Uso versus uh, Ilya Dragunov. And then I liked the Lyra Valkyria match that she had, the match that she had with Zoe Stark. You know, and even... Uh, and even um, Dakota Kai brought it when she faced Becky Lynch in uh, the, you know their match. Very good. There's a lot of good action, you know, when it comes to the women's matches. They've been looking very good, given good time in the ring. And of course, we didn't see that in the last administration, right? Two minute matches, canceled matches. Here, it's like they're being given good time. And I have to admit that even sometimes if they have short amount of short amount, short amount of time in the ring, they put in a lot of stuff in there, so that you can see what they can do, you know. But uh, yeah, I enjoyed uh, Monday Night Raw. Sometimes uh, we, you know we rarely we rare, we rarely uh, see Raws that are, you know, that are good. Sometimes they fall short. But we're talking about the last in administration. You know, Triple H is in charge, and sometimes he he drops the ball, but not to the point where it's so awful. It's just like sometimes we want focus on something that doesn't happen, or there's other things that we wish we could have seen. But when you look at how Triple H does, you know, his booking does his you know he's he does creative and runs things. You know, there's a difference there. It's not like how it was before. And then to think that people still think that McMahon is in the weeds, that somehow he is in charge, he's not. He's gone. 
Like I said, he's a parasite. He is the damn wart on your behind that you want to get rid of. And it took a long time, but finally you took the right medicine and it's gone. It's like with McMahon. He got, they got rid of him finally, even though he was like a damn wart that you just could not get rid of, right? And then you see Stephanie McMahon make two appearances, right? At WrestleMania, and then she made it at the during the draft. She wasn't going to come back while her dad was in charge. Why would she? All right? But like I said, the uh, tournaments are looking they are looking good. You know, next week we're seeing semifinals. So definitely uh, we're seeing the quarters for SmackDown this uh, coming Friday. And then we're going to see the finals happening at, you know, the, the PLE in uh, Jeddah, Saudi Arabia. And um, I'm looking forward to it. And I think that it's going to be a great pay-per-view or PLE. <laughs> Sometimes we have to get away from saying pay-per-view because it's PLE now. And, um, you know, I really have nothing more to say because, you know, I've said all I can. And uh, just like I said, it was a great uh, episode of uh, Monday Night Raw. Those of you who are hearing me, maybe I'm not as loud or as not as uh, thing. I'm, I'm very tired. Y'all know the deal. Those of you who have been watching my videos know what I'm going through health-wise and stuff. And very tired at, at most times, especially I just came home from work. So, you know, on top that, that's on top of uh, how I already feel anyway. But uh, I just want to thank uh, those of you who continue to watch my videos. And those of you who continue to subscribe. I mean, I, every time I look at the subscriber count, it just goes up. It might go up one, go up two. But that's very important to me. And it takes my mind off of what I'm going through. And it just makes me feel like, you know, people do appreciate what I bring to, you know, to the to YouTube with my channel. Um, that's all I ask for is just your help and support and your, uh, you know, just you, you people coming and uh, listening to my videos and watching my videos. And uh, please, I ask uh, for those of you before I... And this video is to like, just click like, the share, and subscribe, and also click the uh, notification button. The notification bell is there. Find it and please click. And if you do click all, that way you can get all of my notifications. And uh, well, that's that. That's uh, my uh, rundown and review and my uh, thoughts on Monday Night Raw. Where we saw, you know, the King of the Ring uh, quarterfinals. Uh, now we have semifinals now set. And it's all about SmackDown now. And see what they do and who's going to advance on their end. Looking to be a good PLE. The King of the Ring, Queen of the Ring um, tournament. And uh, let's see who's going to be the king. And who is going to be the queen. Who do you guys got? I know who I feel is going to win. And I'll just keep that to myself until... We get to the finals, and then I could definitely choose who I think will win. If you want to know what it is, I'll be I'll be like this. I want it to be Lyra, Valkyria, and Bianca Belair because that is a very good matchup. But I think they want to going to put they're going to put Io and Belair because there's some unfinished business, you know, and there's some money to be made with that match because you know we know the history between the two. But she's a sentimental favorite, uh, uh, Lyra Valkyria. And there's so much momentum behind her. I think that it would be a, the, the right thing to make her the, uh, the not only to go to the finals, but also to win it. And then in the men's, I'm looking at Randy Orton versus Gunther. Let's see if uh, it turns out to be that. Because that would be actually be a very, very hard-hitting, very physical match. And... Uh, who would I pull for? Of course, I'm going to pull for Gunther because we know the path he's going on to be the future world heavyweight champion. That's where a lot of people think that it's, it's going, and I think that's where it's going to. But anyway, uh, that's my video. So for those of you who stopped by and checked it out, appreciate it. Thank you very much. And in closing, as always, well, not that. I used to say that in my last uh, iteration of this channel, but... Here's what I'll say. Until next time, take care, and I will see you in my next video.